What if we could erase the protein that helps prostate cancer grow instead of just blocking it like we do with hormone uh, therapy, with hormone blockers? That's what Protex, P-R-O-T-A-C-S, are trying to do. And one of them is in phase three trials. Let's talk about it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Jason. I'm 54 years old. And at 52, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer that has that had metastasized to my spine. Today, I want to talk about some really interesting news in the prostate cancer world. There's a family of drugs called Protax. Again, that's P-R-O-T-A-C-S. And they're changing how we think about treatment, especially with uh, metastatic treatment. And though I'm not there yet, but will eventually be, those with treatment-resistant prostate cancer. This is going to be a fantastic news. So PROTAC stands for proteolysis targeting chimera. Bunch of mumbo jumbo, right? Basically, these drugs don't just block harmful proteins. They actually destroy them. So here's how. A PROTAC molecule has two ends. One end grabs onto a harmful protein, like the androgen receptor, and the other grabs onto a tagging enzyme in your cell called an E3 ligase. show you. That's what this is. This shows you the both ends and the linker. So it's a molecule with two... Uh, ends to it. I'm trying to remember the ligands. Two ligands or ends and one of them is engineered to act like a trash trigger and that is it sticks a small marker called uh, ubiquitin ubiquitin <laughs> I just, I just, well, as soon as I said it out loud I've read it and I've read it and I've read it and now as soon as I said it out loud ubiquitin onto the bad protein, basically saying, throw this away. So that's when the cell's cleanup machine called the proteasome sees that tag and breaks the protein down into pieces. So instead of just blocking the protein's uh, function, the protac cell tells, the protac tells the cell, that protac molecule, get rid of this thing completely. And that's a huge shift in how we treat drug-resistant cancer. So what protein are we talking about and why? In prostate cancer, the main protein we're targeting is called an androgen receptor, or AR. So in a healthy body, AR responds to male hormones like testosterone. This is why hormone therapy works. This is why hormone therapy is effective, because the cancer has hijacked a bunch of these androgen receptors and used it to steal our testosterone and fuel the cancer. So... AR responds to male hormones like testosterone and tells certain cells to grow. That's how we get, uh, you know, muscle build muscle mass. That's how our prostate has a lot of androgen receptors. And so that's normal. But in prostate cancer, the disease hijacked, the cancer hijacks this protein and uses it to grow and spread. So even when we use hormone therapy to lower testosterone, the cancer often mutates the androgen receptor or makes more of it or figures out how to activate it without hormones at all. And that's where we become castrate resistant. And that's why just blocking it with drugs with loop like Lupron and Abiraterone, it eventually stops working for many of us. And once, once that stops working, we're looking at, okay, can I do immunotherapy? Can I do Plavicto? Uh, am I on to chemo? And then what's after that? And that's, that's frustrating. So... This is, a, this is a new thing that is another level put in here uh, once the hormone therapy stops working. So again, instead of trying to block the androgen receptor, Protax aim to get rid of it entirely, like removing the lock instead of just jamming the keyhole. So let's be clear. The androgen receptor isn't a bad protein, a bad cell by uh, de default. It's actually a very critical protein in the body. It helps us regulate things like muscle strength, sexual function, and healthy prostate growth. But in prostate cancer, things go sideways. The cancer hijacks that same protein and uses it to grow. Even when we shut down testosterone, the cancer can still activate AR, the androgen receptor, or make mutant versions that keep the growth signal going. So that's why uh, going after it with Protex 
you know, that's why we this is a, a new thing we can do. We're not destroying something harmful in general. We're destroying something that cancer has turned against us. So ARs aren't normally bad. You might be wondering, does the Protect know which androgen receptors, which ARs are feeding cancer and which ones are just doing their normal job? Well, that's, that's where we're at in the phase three trials. It doesn't yet. It tags any androgen receptor it finds. So there's some, so there's, so there's some challenges there. But here's the catch. Cancer cells usually have way more androgen receptor activity or rely on it much more than healthy cells. So when you take androgen receptors away, cancer cells suffer and die, while healthy cells are more likely to adapt and survive. So that's part of the balancing act in cancer treatment. Treatment target what the cancer needs most, even if some of it means collateral damage, which is what we are dealing with in hormone therapy uh, with trying to just jam the jam the lock block it so yeah this is this i'm I'm a little excited about this the protax are in clinical trials there's two main protax drugs being tested right now for cancer one of them is arv 110 arv 110 and that is a bavdeglutamide uh, I might not be saying that right. It's bavdegalutamide. And this one's being tested in men who've already tried other treatments and whose cancer keeps coming back. So this is an active clinical trial going on. The other one is ARV-766. So it's the same idea, but instead of a bavdegalutamide, Lutamide. It's a Lux Degalutamide. And it's a newer version that might work better, especially in people with certain protein, uh, mut- with certain mutations in their AR protein. So one of those is in phase three trials, which is the final stage before FDA approval. That means it's showing serious promise. And with all the cuts that have been going on that have impacted cancer research, especially prostate cancer research, What's important about this is it's got private investing. So drug companies are investing tens of millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars into these drugs because they're showing that uh, positive of an outcome. So for those of us with uh, for those with advanced prostate cancer, especially with castration resistant cases, treatment options are often limited, but this offers a new approach. One that doesn't rely on starving the cancer, but on removing how it feeds altogether. And this isn't just theoretical. The like I said, major pharmaceutical companies are investing hundreds of millions into ProTac research. That tells me we're not the only ones who see the potential. So what to watch out for? Unlike or like with any new treatment, there are still questions. We don't know the long-term side effects. It's not clear how long the benefits will last for each patient. It's early days, uh, but so far, the results are good enough to push these drugs into late-stage trials. So if you're curious about joining a clinical trial, bring it up with your oncologist or go look at clinicaltrials.gov. I probably didn't have to write that. clinicaltrials.gov. I'll be keeping a close eye on this as it develops. Uh, it's, you know, I'm a uh, year 2 of treatment and on average year 3 is when uh, people tend to become castrate resistant and I'm I'm nervous about that and I'm nervous about what the next step is. But if this is uh, this is a promising treatment as far as a next step, so uh, I will keep an eye on this and I'll update you as I know more. All right. As always, uh, this journey is personal, but we don't have to go through it alone. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching. Love you all.